Black Lantern. Wait a second, we need something here. Here we go. Some light. That's what we need. Well, this is 52 Weeks of Green Lantern, the Undead Edition. My power is dead, my lights are dead, my internet connection is dead, and apparently, I'm somewhat dead. So, without further ado, let's go in. Now, normally, I would have reread the issue right about the time I was planning to do this. Either I would be doing, either I would be rereading it while I'm speaking about it or I would have just finished before I turned on my cam. Now obviously with no internet connection it's a slightly different story so I'm going to be going off of memory which means I may be remembering some things as I go along. Now this week we're talking about Green Lantern The New Guardians issue number two. Now this issue mainly revolves around two people. Kyle Rayner and Saint Hope. If you notice, in issue number one, Saint Hope did not appear. Now, there's a bit of a scuffle. Remember, it ended on a cliffhanger. There's a bit of a scuffle. You know, pretty much every lantern gets a chance to show their personality, show their unique character quirks, their abilities. So on and so forth. You know, um... What's his name? Wow, I hate it when I do that. Arkillo's tongue is still out. His ring speaks for him. They specifically mention Mongol, although Arkillo does not like Mongol to be mentioned. So I'm going to point out, just, just for those keeping track, this is not for everybody, but for those keeping track, Hal Jordan, Lantern, five years. Kyle Rayner, Lantern, two years. Which means the Sinestro Corps has existed for about a year in universe. And Archilos had his tongue ripped out. So, with that in mind, let's keep going. So, Kyle's kind of, he's not exactly getting his ass beat, but he's not winning the five-way fight. Let's see. We've got an orange ring with no bearer. So they're wondering what's up with Larflees. I believe, I believe he appears next issue, according to the writer. But I'm not, I'm not checking my notes on that at the second. So, I believe he appears issue three, Larflees. Um, I do know he is in the series. I believe it's issue three he appears. Um, you've got Blees, Arkillo. Fatality, Kyle, of course. No Blue Lantern has appeared yet, and we have, uh, I can never remember the names of the Indigos, except for Indigo 1, of course. I'm not sure if he ever had a name before, but we get the sec, the kind of second-in-command guy of the Indigo tribe. So, they have their bit of back and forth, their show of powers. Saint, Ho Saint Walker, sorry, Saint Walker shows up, and he's basically like, he doesn't know what's going on, but, you know, his thing is hope. So he's going to follow Kyle, kind of, because uh, Kyle's going to Ganthit. So, obviously, they both trust Ganthit. And here's where we set off some interesting events. Now, I'm going into this having just read, because I picked this up at Comic-Con, uh, Black, Black, sorry, Blackest Night, Tales of the Core, which included St. Walker's origin story. So it was kind of nice reading... St. Walker's origin story and this issue almost back to back. They're not exactly connected stories, but together it really puts a lot in perspective with this character that I would not have had otherwise and makes me able to enjoy this issue a lot more. For those who have not read it, it's not essential. It just, I don't think St. Walker really, just from having read Blackest Night and What Little of Brightest Day I've read, Saint Walker does not really appear to be a character in and of himself. He's, you know, an ideal 
but he doesn't seem to be a character. Now, once you've read his origin, you can sort of see more of where he's coming from, and there's more flesh, uh, fleshing out to him. So, in that light, well, I would say any story with him will benefit from this. This just happens to be probably the story that's f f featured him the most that I've paid attention to. Well, s except for his first appearance. So they go to Ganthet. We find out that Ganthet has had his memory erased. Um, this goes into an interesting discussion that I'm going to bring up at the end of the video after people want to talk about this issue. So... What's interesting about this is that we know that the next Green Lantern story arc is started by Ganthet getting his emotions back. In this case, Ganthet has had his emotions stripped from him by the Guardians in order to be a more efficient Guardian. So obviously at this point he doesn't much care because he has no emotional attachment to his emotions. Yeah, call the... Uh, mm -hmm, call the Paradox Police, except I think they choked on a giant frog. But, for those who don't get that nerdy reference, Ganthet pretty much does not help them. The Guardians are pissed off that Kyle has all these rings following him. And they attack. So, another cliffhanger, which is kind of expected. So, how do I feel about this issue? Well, I enjoyed it. I mean, I already said New Guardians was the series I was looking forward to most because that is my favorite part of what to me is the essence of Jeff Johns interpretation of the Green Lantern universe and a book that focuses on the different cores put together really makes that shine so I really am enjoying this concept I might have preferred some different characters but what we're getting so far is I'm sorry, I'm terrible with names. Um, after having attended the panel, I should really know this, but the writer of New Guardians picked lanterns that he felt he could relate to and write really well. And it shows because their personalities aren't, you know, obviously Arkillo has a different personality than Sinestro. Obviously, Blees has a different personality from Atrocitus, so on and so forth. And all of their personalities shine through very strongly in this issue. Fatality talks a bit. Yeah, the Indigo guy speaks in English or basic or what have you a little bit. You know, you get some idea of their thought processes you know, why, you know, how they're reacting. They're not just mindless automatons attacking Kyle because the script says so. You know, they're really shining through. So I felt this was really well written. I say it focuses mainly on Kyle and St. Walker. That's basically because when everybody's in it, except for St. Walker, is the fight scene. Uh, once the fight scene ends and you get into some more thought, I'm not going to say more meaningful, but some more thoughtful dialogue. It's Kyle and Walker going off on their way to Oa and speaking to the Guardians and such. So that is why I say it focuses on them. But really, everybody present really gets a chance to shine. They do mention the fact that, that an orange ring is there, but Larflees is not. So they speculate whether Larflees is alive or not. Like I said, I believe he appears in the next issue. So all in all... If you enjoy the concept of the emotional spectrum and the ways it can be played out, I recommend this issue, this story arc, and Green Lantern New Guardians. I mentioned number one was an okay beginning, and I feel this is one of the, so far, no, actually this is the fourth number two I've seen. So I would say Green Lantern Core number two, one, you know, Green Lantern and Red Lanterns were not horrible number twos but they didn't they weren't great ones green lantern core number two was a very good one it really got the story moving and this is another number two i would really recommend so this second batch of comics was a lot better than the first batch in my opinion i haven't checked out justice league number two 
I don't know. I I would like to think it's going to be better than number one, but I'm not probably not checking out many Justice League comics in the near future. If you've noticed, my series has been kind of a week behind for a short, you know, mainly because of the way that these comics were released. So, all in all, Green Lantern, New Guardians, number two, enjoyable comic if you enjoy the emotional spectrum. Now, if you think it was the dumbest idea ever, you want to stick to green and the occasional yellow and nothing else, it is not the book for you. But if you loved Blackest Night, uh, Sinestro Corps War, Preludes to Blackest Night, all those, this, this is the book to pick up. More so than Green Lantern, this is the book to pick up. Green Lantern Corps is somewhat following along with the green, but as yet we don't know where this is going. Just like Green Lantern is going to go into the Indigo Tribe, but we don't know how that's going to play out for now. So right now I say, if you're into Blackest Night and the surrounding media, the whole mythos that was used to build it up, New Guardians is a book for you. Now, I mentioned an alternate topic that was not about this specific issue I wanted to go into. So here's where I'm going with that. We've seen how the uh, Star Sapphires especially have used their rings to create a crystal which is designed to use love to transform the mentalities of those who they've captured. You know, they basically supplant other emotions with love. We've seen the Indigo Tribe take prisoners and use the power of compassion or such, you know, as, as they use it to transform them. It's been hinted at that many members of the Indigo Tribe were originally really horrible people or some were at least potentially horrible people with no compassion who the power of the Indigo Tribe transformed. The Red Lanterns have not really demonstrated such an ability, although we've noticed that their ring in and of itself pretty much erases your mind. Blue Lanterns have not demonstrated any such thing. Yellow Lanterns haven't really. They've been going more toward a horror aspect and the idea of taking somebody and making them into a horror character would kind of go against that. But here we've seen the, the holders of the green light, the guardians of the universe, have used their power to turn an equally powerful creature into a being who had, whose sole emotion was willpower. Remember, you're talking about Ganthet. This is Ganthet who brought Kyle Rayner the as uh, the writer of this the writer of new guardians believes the most emotionally open green lantern hence his starring the series into the core he started the blue lanterns of hope so he's you know very clearly a lot more emotional than other guardians especially with corona dead and i'm I know very little about Epa Ali Apsa. He might have been similar. But Ganthet is clearly the most emotional guardian going forward. He's also the one most likely to act alone for that reason. Now, they've used their power to strip him of, ang of, ray of anger, fear, hope, love, compassion... Sorry, one second. Sorry about that. It is an important call, but I'll call it back later. So, they have... I don't want to keep repeating myself, but this is... A, it really brings to light this idea of using your emotional power to strip another powerful being of all emotions except for that one so 
as we see here, it's kind of a scary concept. The Indigo Tribe, and to a lesser extent, the Star Sapphires have been using it for good. At least good as they see it. But, as we can see here, you know, the Guardians have been on shaky moral ground for a long time. And now we're seeing... And now we're seeing that they are pretty much taking a, an emotion, a more moral being and turning him into this emotion, emotionless being of nothing but power. So it's definitely going to be interesting to see how that plays out and if any of the other writers take this anywhere in the future with Red Lanterns or anywhere else in Green Lantern. Definitely something I'm going to be looking into seeing if we find any more of. So, I've gone an extra six minutes past the issue. So, without further ado, this is the Man in Black Lantern out for the week.